welcome or welcome back to the podcast Will Act for Change, where we meet with theater and film professionals to discuss advocacy in theater and film. I'm your host, Kat Kemet, and today we are joined by Katherine J. Espin. I'm really excited to bring Katherine on this show because we were both in the same graduating class at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And since graduating, Katherine has made a splash in indie festivals both in LA and around the country, and not only in front of the camera. In addition to her acting work, she's also been busy behind the scenes as director and editor. Her latest project, Cerebrum, The Tulsa Murders, won Best Web Series and Best Ensemble Cast at the Independent Shorts Awards in Hollywood. Welcome to the podcast, Kat. Hi, thank you for (laughs) inviting me. (laughs) Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you. Great to have you. Um, I was actually really excited when I saw you pursuing multiple avenues of filmmaking after school. Um, As a person, you've always been so genuine and warm and seeing you take the reins in your career is, it's just so inspiring. So um, I wanted to ask, what really got the ball rolling for you after school? Uh, Thank you for that, by the way. (laughs) So sweet. Um, um, For me, honestly, I've always had that drive, even while I was in school. I really wanted to like get started and like start making more projects, start doing more Um, because it honestly started back when I was at home in Texas. And then coming out here, I took a little pause more in the filmmaking and like devoted more to acting because I felt like I needed that technique, which is why I went to school. But that's why I wanted it to be more centered in film and theater, uh, film and TV as well. Um, But I love that I got that theatrical like foundation Um, and in that enriching, you know, like anything with film. So um, yeah honestly like it, the the drive that ball was kind of already there I just was able to now have the time to do it I was like okay cool especially because we graduated during the pandemic yep <laughs> it was like all we had was time too during that time and I was just like whoa then I guess I'll just write a short right now <laughs> and it was like a silent and I was like cool we don't have to worry about sound with that and then just have fun and it just ended up doing a lot better than I thought it would to just even in film festivals with that one but that was really like a big key for me that I was like wow I really want to keep doing more of this because it's yeah I couldn't picture doing anything else in that moment too (laughs) awesome so um I wanted to get your take both as a woman filmmaker and as a Latina filmmaker I wanted to know how your lived experiences have shaped how you tell stories yeah this is good (laughs) (laughs) um I how it's shaped I know in the beginning for sure um even when I was young and I would watch like movies and things like that I and and even tv shows um not seeing myself on screen I'm sure a lot of you know women in my case have said that you know um growing up I just didn't see like girls uh, lead characters and you know tv shows and stuff like that like of color um and then like it does get to you a little bit like when you're young you don't really think about it too much um, but being an immigrant as well and having come to America so young, I was seven when we came um, to Texas. And one of the things my dad said, you know, while we were getting all of our, you know, process, like immigration process and all that underway, he was like really adamant about letting us know, like as kids, like try hard, try hard not to like um, get too much attention. You know, we want to be kind of like under the radar, you know, we don't, you know, just for the sake of the family too. And I'm just like, whoa, if that's the case. In my mind, I thought, well, then I can't pursue things like actress or like things that are literally in the spotlight. (laughs) And so that kind of dimmed that for me personally. Um, But um, later on, um, I was able to like say no to that and like just literally started to like, you know what, I'm going to do what I want to do, pursue this, see where this goes. And even in high school after that, I decided like in community college, um, start taking some more classes and filmmaking and acting and all that stuff. And I would keep getting this response from my teachers, like, where have you been? You know, and I'm just like, whoa, okay, I I guess I can do this, actually. (laughs) It's a little like dream I've had, but I can actually doing it. Um, And then it just encouraged me more. But it's funny, though, when it came, that was theater. But when it came to the filmmaking classes, it was different, because it was like, full of a bunch of guys um very nerdy looking too <laughs> but like <laughs> that's besides the point <laughs> but like I would come in from like ballet I'd have like my leotard on too you know and they'd look at me like I was lost like are you in the right room do you, do you need help finding the right room and I'm like no I'm in this class it's like you know film production editing that's where I got the foundation for all those skills was there 
Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I am in this seat right here, <laughs> learning what you guys are learning. And I'm never going to forget this moment that I feel like really, oh, it lit a fire in me. It was, um, we were just setting up for like a short film, right? And then I noticed that some guys weren't like handling the tripods correctly. There's ways to properly set up lights, right? And so I'm looking at them like, this is very, you know, expensive equipment. Like, if you don't know how to set this up, like I can show you, it's okay. And then they were like, well, would you know you're a girl? I was like, what century are we living in right now? Like, wait, what? Like, I didn't even, <laughs> I couldn't even respond, honestly. I was like, because thankfully I did have a dad that like would encourage us girls in our family. You can do whatever you want, like, you know, go for it, whatever. It's like, so for me, that kind of mentality was not something I grew up with. So thankfully from dudes, <laughs> from the male species. And like um, hearing that, yeah, just honestly propelled me to be like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, I can mm -hmm. do whatever you can do and probably even better. And so in this case, it just lit a fire in me to like, be like, wow, this is the industry I'm going into is so male saturated and oriented for so many years. Um, and I will say just to end the, <laughs> the answer too is, um, I, when I was writing my own short, because we all kind of like collect, kind of like we did in school, where like we all take turns doing different positions for everybody's short film um, mm -hmm. or short scene. In this case, for mine, when I had written my script, I realized that I made it like two lead characters that were both male in like their mid 40s or something. And like it, it didn't really matter if it was male, they were male or female. And then my direct, my teacher at the time was like, you know, you can make these women. And I was like, oh my gosh you're right like there's nothing about these characters that would have to be male mm -hmm. and he was like it's okay he's like because you are the only girl in this class and he's like well one of two girls in this class and he was like it's it's a mental thing unfortunately you see this on screen so much it's ingrained unfortunately he's like yeah make them female if you want and I was like oh I definitely will <laughs> Yeah. And it's crazy having to rewire my brain now from what I've seen for so long to like what should be, you know, like the reality of what we see nowadays too. Yeah, because we're we're so used to yeah. that being the default. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And like I was like, wow, I can't even I did that, you know? <laughs> like but yeah, the yeah, subconscious thing too. It's crazy. Um but yeah. speaking on that. There was a study done um, by USC that revealed that just 3.5% of leading roles were Latina, Latino, um, even though over 18% of the U.S. population is. Um, in your experience in the film industry so far, have you seen a shift in this trend at all? And um, is it moving in a positive direction, hopefully? <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I would say I do feel a shift for sure. Like for what I've seen, it's a very slow shift, unfortunately, still. Yeah, Um, very slow. <laughs> um, I even realized, too, like, one of the reasons why I even wrote, um, there's a project that I'm still trying to finish get funding. Um, It's called Red Balloons. And I wrote it way back in like 2020 as well. During the pandemic, I wrote a couple of scripts. And this was one of them. And it was because I was like, wow, like, I would love to play like a lead, you know, Latina, quirky Latina, lead in a comedy and a rom com. And it's like crazy how for me, it's so hard to find. Like yeah. the movies that have been made that were rom coms. I realized I'm like my favorites, you know, they 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 weren't. Um, and even, you know, characters like Jess and like New Girl. I'm like, I could so have fun playing a role like that, you know, like all weird and stuff. And like <laughs> and it would be so fun. But yeah, it's crazy how like even when I would submit to projects now and like I see breakdowns for rom coms or of some sort or even like little web series or whatever, the leads were specifically white or specifically you know a specific type of you know race or ethnicity and it, it didn't but when you read the description there was nothing that needed it to be that way like it could be open for anyone yeah and so it's like a struggle and not being able to find those for myself to submit to because you know and and I do feel like because of the low tier I guess the beginning stages of you know every industry and it's the beginning and obviously these are all like thesis student films and like we're all mm -hmm. struggling with that too of that mental like this is how we've seen it this is what I see we're gonna keep going with this is that immaturity and so to speak in that way of like keeping that pattern as opposed to breaking out of it I do yeah. feel a shift for sure that it is slowly changing but because of that it allow it 
yeah, it, it just pushed me to write my own. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to write something for myself because clearly, you know, show people it can happen. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Um, But yeah, it is definitely a slow burn still, unfortunately. Um, So just more too, unfortunately, I think to the point that it's, it still feels more like a checkbox people are still using in order to like color, have some kind of type of diversity in their project or, or story or whatever not not always sometimes it does serve the story and it is because yeah. of this person's world for sure you can see the difference though <laughs> like you can tell it's like oh well you can clearly tell they want to have <laughs> the written the rainbow is there <laughs> so it's yeah. like everyone's yeah that box it does feel like a box sometimes that they're checking off like oh I got the Latina and then yeah um, unfortunately that's that's <laughs> I don't know how it would would yeah. feel on on the other side of it from from my perspective. I mean, I mean, obviously, I have a limited perspective, but it does sometimes feel like disingenuous mm-hmm. and not not fully committed to showcasing right. lived experiences of other people. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you can actually tell. You can really feel when it feels like you're just going to be this checkbox depending on the project and the nature of the project and the story and right. the character as opposed to like it actually fitting a world they clearly have these characters are essential like that's why yeah. they have to be the way that they are yeah yeah so um in that vein how has advocacy and activism played a part in your journey as a filmmaker um yeah like it just inspires me more to to write like to not, and it's funny because I'm not a, I'm really not a writer <laughs> like I, I need I need help like um but I I have to just because it's like I have to birth something that can help with that too and like um at least the current stories I'm like writing right now especially like just like I said yeah it's all but it is encouraging to see more and more like I said it, it's it is a slow thankfully a slow bur- growth you know birth more and more of, of seeing that representation seeing that advocacy being played out um um I want to help encourage that more too and I see it too as an actress in sets I'm like wow I'm like surrounded I'm looking around I'm like surrounded by other Latinos and Latinas that look like me and are young and we speak Spanish too also that is another thing I wanted to mention too is like that's actually kind of hard to find now too is and not to speak bad or ill at all too anyone who doesn't speak the language obviously that they are from or inherit from it's just one of those things that in life you know like I know with a lot of Latinos um or Hispanic you know people like they especially young people actors they struggle with that now because it's like when they get cast for a role they're expected to speak Spanish and sometimes they don't know or like they didn't have that growing up because a their parents worked hard they went to school only learned English you know like their parents can't teach them Spanish because they're working so it's like yeah their their story is very different than mine like I my parents did make sure at least my dad made sure that we spoke Spanish and at home at all times read books in Spanish to keep that alive so like the language too now is like when you're cast as Latino they're very specific about you need to speak Spanish too um which is good in the sense of like cool like let's let's say something with those stories because obviously that is enriching to our culture of course right um but it is disheartening to see too that like it's so many of my you know great friends even Damien I know that's his struggle too is that he that 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 Spanish that accent is not going to be there unless you really really, a learn the language oh you know and like actually you just like have it within you but it is I am happy that there's two now different kinds of stories you're going to start seeing now though in the Latino Mm -hmm. because of that there's those that are like and I like how he says it like the Nosabo kids and like those that are you know with bilingual in that sense um but yeah I, I am excited because I think with these filmmakers especially I've seen a, oh a lot of the projects that I've been acting in the directors the majority of the ones that I've worked with have been like female and Latinas and so I'm like this is so exciting like ah. Uh, I am really excited for the future, honestly, because of that, because of, wow, this is what it looks like right now. This is what sets and crews look like right now. It's so exciting to see where this is going to go, you know, in years yeah. from now. So. Especially the beginning stages, because you know that they are the the big directors of tomorrow. And yes. as their careers grow, you're going to see more of that. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. Really but yeah, 
and it's emotional because it just excites me like and just seeing like their work and and they're good and I'm like oh this is exciting like please keep me under your <laughs> keep me in contact you know like I'll be available for whatever the project you want like but just like <laughs> rising together too helps because and encouraging each other like yeah. I know one Latina director I had um I, I told her I was like because she was it was her first time too so I could see she was so nervous but she's like the sweetest thing and I'm just like Jackie like you're doing great it's gonna be fine and like honestly I I just encourage her all the time because she like the film the short film did so great in festivals too and I'm like and she's just gonna make it a feature now so like you know like it just it's just so encouraging to encourage each other too especially you know yep. for like yeah have that same that background rising tide raises all ships kind yeah. of mentality you know yeah. um, especially in this industry sometimes it can be it can feel so competitive that you lose that sense of community and yeah. I think rebuilding that especially at the beginning stages of a of a career path yes. and having the mentality that we can all rise yeah. up together is, is important definitely mm -hmm. um so you and I both graduated at the same time Mm -hmm. And our careers have taken very different directions as things often go in this business. In your career, do you see yourself more as an actor or as a director? Or are you a true hyphenate working both in front of and behind the camera equally? So good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get this question asked all the time, actually. <laughs> like, so are you an actor? Are you a director? And I'm just like, honestly like I, I I think I've done I end up looking at my resume so to speak <laughs> I'm like to properly answer that nowadays but honestly like it's been both like I've been actively acting still and actively directing and making my own projects so it is definitely literally on par so which actually it's exciting not that much sleep a lot of <laughs> sleep, <laughs> just a lot of work <laughs> it gets double the work honestly because you're like yeah and even in projects where like I'm now working on right now that I'd be doing both hats. It's like getting that experience right now is like really having to pre-plan like pre-production for that is huge because it's like I want to make sure that all the my director had a pre-production is good to go where I just like can release it to like my producers to help me make this flow on the day of shooting so that I can give myself some time to prep as the actor right before going in to shoot. Yep um so that's been like that juggle <laughs> for me <laughs> um but it's it's been great because like there's times I think to myself um because I know with both they're very like at least the at least <laughs> the trajectory can be very different in yeah. how you level up in both of those or like the way of like even networking when it comes to like both feels different and for me, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I need to choose or like having the sense of that pressure of choosing truly which one to devote more to than the other. Um, but honestly, I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm going to do both until I maybe have to or not. But then I see people like, you know, Greta and like other these other female directors that have done both. And like, yep. I'm like, it's so possible. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stay the course and <laughs> see where this takes me. So definitely possible but as you said it's a lot of work because you're essentially managing two totally yeah. like they're they're related but they're yeah. essentially separate career paths for what you yeah. have to do for both of them definitely um yeah. now you grew up in texas how did the environment where you grew up and how you grew up impact who you are today and what you bring to the stories you tell yeah um i think uh, def i mean i know definitely um the immigration you know aspect mm -hmm. of my life um plays a huge part in yeah just like the stories I want to tell now too um <laughs> and just because I know I'm not the only one you know who has gone through struggles that I have and like even being someone who like in school like been such a good student always getting awards and, like I'm not just about to, you know, not to like toot my own horn or anything but like I was just such like a you know like devoted cookie to like doing all these things but then like going out for jobs to just be a mentor to kids in high school, I couldn't get because they were government related, you know, programs that I had to be mm -hmm. legal for, you know, or like, yeah, I had to, you know, be a citizen or a resident for And I was like, really, I fit all the qualifications for this. And it's because of that, that I can't. That's, so I feel like that alone in itself has prevented me a lot from like, going further in certain areas, or even going to school, a struggle for me was 
like getting funding <laughs> for this private <laughs> conservatory. It was like, yeah. I literally had to say, I am signing my name to debt beyond compare because I couldn't call, I couldn't apply for FAFSA. I couldn't apply for government help in any way. So I had to either just have the whatever scholarships the school could provide me and then private loans that were just going to be the worst after graduating. And I'm like, yeah. This is the price I'm paying for my dreams and it is what it is. But it sucks that like I could have had more if I was in a different status or position um, in life. Um, and even when it comes to being DACA, I think I was the first one in LA. I know I think Marlene was another one I found out later as a winter, but um and I remember when I applied, I'm not even gonna lie, I applied. I had to apply because of the way that the application was set up was I came off as an international and I'm just like, mm. but I'm not, I've been living here my whole life. So it's like, I had to message the admins, right? And I'm like, Hey, um, actually I had to put that I was international because of the way of the application was, but like, I'm actually, I've been here all my life. And then they were like, Oh, weird. And then they got to the bottom of it. And it's like, yeah, we, we've never, they didn't know what to do of like how to go throughout the process of me specifically. Cause they've never, I don't think they've had someone that was DACA before. Um, in the school so yeah that was a, a whole nother you know hoops to jump through as well but honestly that for sure has been a, a huge part of my life and then being Latina as another one too of like um, specific Latina and from a specific Latin American country of Argentina is very different to where I grew up in Texas it's mainly Mexican or you know like a, a Central American you know like countries um, and so our language is different Mm -hmm. um it's more castilian spanish which is a little it, our culture feels more european than it does like actual like what you would think of as latin american like um culture um and so uh, like <laughs> moving and like being in texas it was difficult because people would just see you as a latina and think oh you're mexican they would just automatically and not to say anything about mexicans i love mexican people <laughs> I, love, I love everyone but like it sucks that it's like no i'm actually from a different country there's more countries um, in Latin America and all of you know below we are part of America too um, but you know it's the whole thing and it's that growing up with that kind of um, world and um, just getting comments too being so little like oh why don't you go back to the country where you came from or like oh you know like growing up with these types of things really hits you a lot especially when you're a kid and it's like okay yeah wow you know like in a lot of those kinds of like cities and, and suburban areas in Texas are very square <laughs> in that and obviously it does come down to like their upbringing and what their parents are telling their kids too because it's like I know yeah. that this didn't come from you obviously you heard this from a conversation from your parents or whatever but like yeah it hurts though it hurts and um but it's just a whole different parent. style of like bullying yeah it really is it's like why would you say that <laughs> yeah um things like that really do hit you and like now I still remember these things because it hits hard um yeah. but at the end of the day it has shaped me to be the person I am now and the woman that I am now um to help with that ignorance to help bring light of like you know like people don't know what DACA is even when I've applied to jobs here in LA they're like oh what is that I'm like oh well this is the process for hiring me I'm <laughs> so like here's the documentation everything that you need and they're like oh good for you <laughs> that's fine <laughs> people just are not aware about a lot of these kinds of things and that's fine just having that patience with them and just like educating you know yeah <laughs> yeah now Speaking towards your um, background as a DACA recipient, yeah. I know at one point you were working to develop a documentary around DACA recipients. What was the catalyst? Although I guess you sort of already answered this, but what was the <laughs> catalyst for that project? Um, yeah, um, just I realized for some reason you think you're the only one going through whatever you're going through, right? Sometimes you just mm -hmm. feel like, oh, you know, um, because I just wasn't surrounded by a lot of people that were going through what I was going through. And uh, funny enough, this is going to be, like, it's more personal, but it doesn't really matter. But <laughs> the reason that I'm still DACA is because by the time that my parents were able to ask for us, you know, like, as um, siblings, my myself and my two younger siblings, um, when my parents became citizens and residents, uh, residents and then citizens, they were able to, you know, obviously petition for their children to, you know, also get their um, documentation um, through that if they're still minors. 
I happened to just not become a minor anymore. Like I was no longer a minor by the time my paperwork went through. Oh, and so oh I man. Yeah. Ah, it's so trippy. So, <laughs> so because it took so long. Yeah. By the time that it was time, like I didn't, I was no longer a minor. I was already 21. My siblings got to go through with it. Um, but now I'm now, I was put now in a different list of being an adult. And now I was actually essentially like living now illegally as an adult in the U.S. Even though I've even been though living you, here all my life. And like, yeah. Yeah. Even though you moved here when you were seven, even though your parents yeah. are yeah. citizens, even though they yeah. started the paperwork while you yeah. were still a child. Yeah. It's in, like, Oh that, my that, gosh. Like, dude, the immigration process in this country is insane. And that's one of the biggest reasons I want to make this documentary too, is because of yeah. that. The in, it's, in, it's insane. The, the length of the process in so many different um, stages of where people are exactly in yeah. the whole thing um it's just wild to me because then I'm just thinking like is there not even like an option for me specifically with my position where like everyone in my family has this green card yeah (laughs) I'm the only one who doesn't and then at the same time it's like I've been here all my life I've like you know it wasn't my fault I came here as a you know a child and then it's like now being treated as you know and when I I have good lawyers now unfortunately when I was younger you know like my parents could only afford certain types of lawyers who can like help but like obviously we can't break the bank because it's like my mom was a single mom like she when my parents got divorced you know like my mom you know took it upon herself to like just (laughs) work hard and so like she could only make ends meet for like three teenagers you know it's a lot and as a nurse and she yeah um just we didn't have enough money to like even put in for like immigration anything because it's so expensive every form is like four hundred dollars or more just the form alone not even paying the lawyer not paying for like the processing fees or like it's it all adds up which is what also prolonged a lot of the processes too right and then um now that you know i'm older (laughs) money i can save (laughs) And uh, I sought out like good lawyers. I'm like, that's it. We're not going to friends of a friend who's a lawyer and like wants to be a lawyer, you know? Because that's kind of how we have to like do it all these years. And then now having like the team that I have now, like the firm that I'm working with, they are really great. They're on it. Um, and one of the questions, though, excuse me, in the very beginning was to my mom was like, why did why is she in this position? Why why did you guys not do something early on in the beginning when you know like there were things that you could have done? And then she's like we didn't have the money for that yeah like, what do you mean well of course we're gonna want to do those things but like in life it, it's hard um yeah. yeah and then they're like oh you know it's like one of those things that it dawns it's like yeah man it, there's a lot of at play but yeah that's one of the biggest reasons I want to make this documentary and also too I was on set with someone um I met this guy who was also DACA and he oh even Marlene too sorry back in high in school high school back in college uh, back in school like whenever I talked to her it was in the time that we were all staying um after the pandemic so I was like Mm -hmm. an RA and so I was like going around and checking up on people and when I checked up on her once she was like um at the time for me in school I had to renew my DACA you have to renew it every two years um oh my gosh I guess I could take it back to like even qualifying for DACA is a whole nother thing too by the way I don't know if you know but like you have to like have so many things that you have to check off in order to even be able to have DACA because DACA is I mean at least it's only for those who obviously came in as childhood arrivals um from I think after 20 2003 or 2001 after that um and then they blocked it off I think 2010 so if you came in around that time you qualify for this I think um I could be wrong about the dates I apologize for that but um from then on you check that off and then you have to have good grades you have to be either going to college or have a good job you cannot have any tattoos because they're all gang related even if it was like a little butterfly (laughs) so no tattoo you cannot be addicted to alcohol or drugs and then and obviously the way that they know about this is you have to schedule you schedule an appointment to go in and see like a you know federal like type of doctor who like basically scans They, they do the blood work they scan your you know hair for the drug you know use um, they check your body so you don't have any tattoos. And of um, course, that's not free. That definitely kind yeah, of come it, with a oh, cost. Oh yeah. yeah, the application alone too was wow. also a part of that. 
um you have to have like no track record or criminal record of any kind obviously you know felonies or broken laws nothing so you have to just really have like you have to be like this upright citizen for sure to even like yeah. essentially as as perfect as you can possibly be pretty much um yeah so like that alone i think i think that's all um that was a requirement and then after that once you're approved you have to renew this every two years right so then there's money with that too i think for yeah. me in total with at least with the lawyer that i worked for um with with for that one specifically it's like at least 800 to 900 dollars every single time around um i have to do that process every two years and the thing is it sucks because then after let's say that work permit it allows you to work by the way go to school um but you cannot leave the country if you leave the country you cannot come back but they do protect you from not getting deported and things like that because they're like no they're here even even like to travel even if you were to want to go to say canada like now thankfully i think there's ways you can apply for a specific type of leave but for the longest that wasn't a thing um now wow. if you leave for like school or work there is a way you can do that um to leave for a temporary amount of time but I couldn't go to a cruise, for example. I couldn't, like, you know, <laughs> just freely yeah. travel the world. I couldn't do that. No, not right now. Unless I didn't want to come back to the U.S. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So there's that. But um, <laughs> I understand now the need for this documentary because there's so much of that. I, I had no idea. Exactly. Like, exactly. It's just that information people don't know. And then when Trump <laughs> took office and there was this one time where he, like, one time many times that he brought up using DACA to a they did like halt DACA too for a long time when the Republican Party unfortunately takes control right um at some point right when they do that shift <laughs> um they 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 pause it sometimes we're like either no I think right now there's no more applications like no, none can be applied now I believe they stopped um renewing you can still um but they, the thing is because it's just like um it's not a law right or anything like that but it's just a way for people to work they can it's such a flexible thing that they can do whatever they want with that too it's like they yeah. can pause it from it continuing or not so you also have that going on where it's like cool can I apply for this still <laughs> to stay in this country or to work or to go to school um, yeah it seems like you're constantly riding a, a tightrope of yeah. of what your future yeah. looks like exactly yeah and even just having a job it's insane and like at the time too, when I was in school, I had just turned 26. So I was now no longer in my parents, you know, and, and you know, insurance with that too. And then on top of that, it's like my, my DACA was up for renewal that year. Um, and the thing is when that happens, when you go through that process, um, at the time I had just my, my Texas ID. So for me to like renew my ID, I have to go to Texas get that whole thing exchanged or whatever but because I couldn't do that I couldn't travel back to Texas during that time we were here I was an RA um like looking over everything I didn't want to travel because you know this COVID is everywhere um and like I'm like great I can't do that so then I'd have to get a California ID and then doing that whole process was different too it took it, everything just takes so long <laughs> ID um and then even after I do get my ID I only have it for like about a year and a half and then I have to renew a new one <laughs> so it's a it's a whole thing yeah. um it affects so much and yeah and I know at the time I think Marlene when I talked to her about like where she was at she told me she was like going through struggles too because she couldn't travel because her ID also expired I think at the time too and so she's oh she was waiting I think in that process of renewal and in that process yeah. of renewal it sucks because you're kind of like a sitting duck um like, I can't do anything right now because obviously my thing is expired. I'm waiting for documentation to allow me to do my life still. <laughs> so yeah. you kind of just can't do anything to, like, you know, mess anything up. Um, can't even go home to see family yeah, during the holidays. Go, see, yep. Can't travel. Can't do anything like that because you don't have anything, you know, documentation to help you with that. Can't apply for a job. And at the time, you know, we were like, all right, maybe there's jobs that are opening up. And it's like, I just graduated. First thing you got to do as an actor, get a day job, you know, like, yeah. or whatever couldn't even do that so thankfully I was able to like still work for the school as an editor <laughs> if yeah. I did not have that saving grace man I would have at that some point gone back home don't know how or when you know who I would have been yeah, that, that. That yeah. puts you yeah. in such a tricky position because you can't even travel to go yeah. back home yeah it's it's, it's yeah. yeah that was not a great time <laughs> in that regard and but here I am despite what I'm going through making a movie <laughs> you know yeah like, <laughs> It's about only... all of this yeah 
<laughs> it's insane and it, yeah like I'm, I'm definitely working on it still but it's cool to see that there's more of us out there um that have you know different and similar experiences with our journeys um thankfully with me I am still going through at least the immigration process of becoming you know uh, having a green card at some point with my mom right now currently but it's separate from DACA it's a whole different thing because DACA yeah. does not give you legal status whatsoever for a long time though there have been petitions of the dream act which I mean I'll, just, I'll go into that too in the documentary as well is that so long they've been like bringing up to the senate you know for so long to vote and for it to be there to be a way for DACA recipients to get legal status through it um also too a lot of people don't think that we we pay um taxes and things like that I'm like I'm sorry that's all I've done for a long time <laughs> but like I don't know or, or we get benefits I don't know like there's just all these things that people think that DACA people are that we're just here to get their jobs I'm like we work what we're kids that have been here all our whole lives like you don't know who yeah it's it's it, interesting the different parties and how they fight about yeah it. you've been here since you were seven so yeah, exactly <laughs> oh man um yeah so but unfortunately with some that I have met at least with another fellow um I mean he and I are um co-workers to a production company um now but um his name is Emiliano and he I met on set as an actor as well and he was also DACA and he was like I also came here when I was seven you know from Mexico with his family so very similar situation but in his case he really doesn't have anyone in his close vicinity of or kinship that can even like help him get citizenship so right yeah. now all he has is DACA and so many only have that it's like they don't even have a way to change that position so to speak or that status so to speak so I really want to make that too and like include all of them include all these stories um to yeah go deeper into that so it's definitely a work in progress right now <laughs> now um I think we touched on this a little bit but when that project is finished what do you want to be the takeaway for audiences yeah um definitely wanted to get at least laurels for <laughs> film festivals it just, <laughs> yeah. it just, it's a weird thing because you're paying for this too you're paying for every submission you don't pay the guarantee you're gonna win right because yep. the competitions for some are just dire it's like insane you're like it's like literally <laughs> a little penny in a huge ass fountain um i'm sorry am i allowed to cuss? um in a huge fountain we could yes <laughs> you can cuss as long as you don't drop an f-bomb because i cut those. okay cool 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 <laughs> I figured I tried my best uh, but um yeah it's like a huge you know you're just dropping in this huge fountain you never know if it's going to be picked and obviously it's art, art is so subjective but at yep. least for some weird reason when you want to take a project to another level like having those laurels it just adds you know credit to it right a credibility mm -hmm. to it in some way shape or form um but yeah I would like it to after get you know a good circ a good Film, film, blah, film festival circuit um after that really want to pitch it to like streaming services and things like that to so just get as many like eyes on it as possible for that just for information for people to be aware and to like know that hopefully with the dream act it actually becomes a thing because it's gone up to the senate like so many times already yeah and then it's dropped because of one little thing or one little clause in there or something that's like oh we agree with all of it but this one thing and then it has to go back to rewriting and then like go back again through all the bill, you know, stages that it has to go through. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's such a long, long process, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Now on back to the early part of the, this whole conversation um, about representation, how important is it for you and your experience to see Latina representation on the screen and specifically BIPOC women represented yeah oh man it's so, it's so important <laughs> um like I said I am thankful that you can see that it's changing it's very slow change but it's very it, it is getting there um and yeah for me I at least just um yeah I'm personally like I like to like take action right off my own and so like mm -hmm. there's like projects I'm writing too where it's like series of like um there's an this indigenous like um well I even found out about my indigenous roots during the pandemic when I just decided to focus on myself and like do a bunch of that stuff and like even doing um just tests of like what I'm made up of DNA wise stuff like that and even talking to my dad about like soul searching in that regard of my background where I come from um finding those roots um I think I did like a photo shoot with someone and then like my family from back home started 
posting or, or commenting on the pictures like oh princess Warpe or like like this Warpe is like the indigenous um uh, tribe that I'm um descendant of or like have roots from um I didn't grow up in that culture right I'm not like you know first nation in that way or like like you know and in, involved in that culture so to speak but it is in me right I'm, I'm descendant of that and which is why I look the way that I look too and in my family if you looked at everyone my, <laughs> they're all pretty pale they're all pretty white looking because Argentinians I don't know if you know this but they look very European in the in that regard because of the immigration down there um that happened but I look definitely more like the native you know community there like more of like our roots right um through my grandma's side for sure um because she looks a bit more too like me um in that regard but anyway bottom line is I just did a lot of soul searching and yeah that's how I even found out about that route for myself and even then in my research more about that culture about that tribe about that you know family in that regard like I just went deep <laughs> biggest <laughs> like hole and I kept finding more and more and more I'm like oh my god this is incredible unfortunately a lot of them did assimilate in a way right that like they you know it, it was lost like a lot of it did die essentially there's not like a thriving you know like community there so to speak um mm. but it, I would love to at one point travel there and like go back to the those areas and see what is there what what is there to find more of um and bring that up you know like share these stories and the cool thing is I did find this female um warrior right so to speak from that tribe that I'm just like oh my god I feel like she's like I don't know how connected I am to this woman but I feel it so hard in like my my bones um and I need to tell her story and that's literally one of the things I'm writing right now and the thing is I've read so many books about her I don't want to say her name because I don't I want it to come out later I want it to be a surprise but um try really hard not to say too much <laughs> because <laughs> I know people always tell like don't tell a lot of people like what you're working on and sometimes you never know but yeah so I'm like okay I need to be good about that <laughs> um thank you I already like uh got the copyright you know like uh, submitted and everything to the writers guild too like so it, the idea is protected thankfully um but at the same time I've read so many books on her and one specific book was so narrative and so beautiful and she did all this research already from all these other books I was already reading too about her so I'm like okay cool she was able to make a story from everything too that she's researched that I'm researching and I love the book so much I'm like this is perfect already for adaptation mm -hmm. and I'm like I talked to the, these two producers I work for all the, I work with all the time Charlotte and Jojo and I told them like hey guys so there's this project I want to do but uh I really want to get the author's blessing to use her actual book to adapt it and they were like they're like Kat here's the thing <laughs> what if she says no <laughs> and then I mean but you never know un, you never know until you ask right exactly and from yeah. and then they said you know maybe it's better to ask for forgiveness later and I know that that is unfortunately a thing that happens a lot in filmmaking too I actually don't agree with that I I really am I am a really opposed to that because I do believe that if it's coming from somewhere especially like a book something that another artist <laughs> has done and done right. the work for I believe you need to give credit where credit is due and like have more of a collaboration to come together and make it better or make something like this come to life visually for them you know imagine that's like a writer's dream I feel sometimes too maybe yeah and so I literally said you know what guys I'm sorry I have to ask for permission I gotta do it because <laughs> I want to use her book specifically and so then I somehow found <laughs> I couldn't find her email I couldn't find her Facebook nothing to reach out and I I went through the publisher which I know that probably like be the worst route you can possibly go to because they're going to want a contract and everything. And yeah. I'm just like, I'm just going to go from like a fan. Like, hey, I'm a huge fan of this book. I just really want to like get in touch with the author. If you have an email, I just want to like tell her how much this has like touched my heart and whatever. And they're like, okay. <laughs> they send me an email, her personal email. I email her and I'm kidding. I kid you not. I was like so nervous because I literally told her everything in like, what I envision, how I how I would love to make this a series. I don't want it to just be a one standalone movie. I want this to be big because I want yeah. like it'd be like my Game of Thrones, literally, because it has everything. It has her life, her struggle, her journey, her strength, like her love, her you know. It, it's a really such a well rounded like. Oh my gosh, I'm like this would hit so hard. Not only like I don't do it for the money, although that would be great, but like. 
I just do it because like stories like this need to be told. <laughs> Mirrors were yeah. real people. She was real, and it's like insane. So like, especially coming from my country, it would blow so much cultural. Like I I hate saying this word. I'm so sorry, but like my country did do a huge number of like whitewashing a lot of history, a lot of books, a lot of stories, a lot of poetry, a lot of music of silencing like indigenous people and like oh man like I just want to cry thinking about it but it is one of those things that I feel like our generation needs to do better and like we we can rewrite history in that sense of like this was history you deleted it but we're bringing it back and that's one of the biggest catalysts for me for this story specifically um but yeah but I'm to like just wrap that this part up but um I I emailed her I told her look I don't have any money I'm an aspiring actress and filmmaker but I would do this justice because I need this this needs to be on screen and like I told her if you want to look at my IMDb of the stuff that I've done so far at you know such a young career like I'm, I'm still working at it but I will see this through um and I would love for you to be a part of it in the sense of like I want your blessing but like obviously I would give you credit where credit is due and like your name will be on it you can guarantee that always because like you did this work for me to be able to you know make this come to life for you on the screen for people to yeah see. and um that's all I said you know and like I'm just waiting for her reply and then yeah like I think two days later she responded and I was so scared to open that email but thankfully she was like thank you so much for this she's like I'm in my 80s or I'm well in you know my older age um at the time that this book came out when I published when it was published it was so contradictory people did not like it you know she got so much backlash it was not welcomed that well um and she's like so there was that that I had to go through so there were things that I wish I would have included in the book that I had to take out but I can give you that too by the way because she was like I I if you want a blessing of sorts I give it to you um please do whatever you want with it I just ask that you give me credit you know for the work I've done and she's like, also, there's other women that I've written about if you want to do something with those two. And I was like, oh, my God, I was crying. So I, I mean, I'm almost to the point of tears right now. Yeah. It is the blessing of someone, especially a writer yeah. that has moved you that much about a story yeah. that you connect to from yeah. from your culture, your background. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And even her struggle with even making that too, like sharing that specific story with that specific yeah. type of indigenous woman, like she was like, yes, um, she's like, please, yeah, just ask you that you give me, you know, credit where credit is due. Um, I don't know how long this thing, you know, these things take, um, but know that you you have my blessing to do with it what you want. And I was like, oh my God, I told her, uh, that's one of my personal, I didn't tell her this, but my personal goal from that too was like, I don't want to rush the process, right? I'm, I, you know, it needs to take how long it needs to take. But yep. I also hope at some point that she gets to see it. I don't know if she will or not. But even if yeah. you know she doesn't, I, 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 I will also like make whatever I can to give proceeds and portions of whatever it grosses, right, or whatever it, it gains to like the family to whoever it can touch that, you know, is related to her, um, yeah. in that way too. But. Yeah, that's something too that I have a huge fire for is like these stories of these women, you know, and and these kinds of kinds of women, yeah, characters um that need to be seen more on screen. Are but you like, going to? Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm like have phlegm. I've been like fighting. What was your question? Sorry. Um, have <laughs> you thought about? I mean, are you going to do like a um? I guess is it going you want it to be a series of movies or a series of uh like a tv series I want it to be a tv series because it is a lot and it's so rich in a sense of like I don't want to I feel like if I it is a because thankfully she does it where like you go through her life like like her mm-hmm. childhood you get a bit for sure but then you see her evolve in her to her old age so it is kind of like a lifelong journey that you see her grow so I know right. for a fact it would be different actresses playing her in different stages of her life for sure which is even better to get more a la know, the crown and I honestly <laughs> even when I told this to the girls um when I say girls I mean Charlotte and Jojo when I told the girls like they were like do you I feel like you want to play her too and I told her <laughs> yeah I do so honestly wherever I am in my age during the process of this where it's about to you know shoot I will play whatever age she's at in that life um, yeah I would love to I just oh man it's I'm telling you it's burning in me <laughs> but um I 
I I already have plans. Well, right now we're still I'm still in the research process too of like right. because it was historical. There's a lot of battles she was in, a lot of like things like that. So I'm doing my research too on just like Argentinian history in that way, um, in that area in those times of you know um 1800s. <laughs> so there's also period, you know, like yeah, oh uh, yeah, and <laughs> like mid 1800s for sure. Um, yeah. So there's that too. Um, their fighting style you know like uh man there's so much I would go into it but definitely after the writing is done right that so to speak with like a good you know drafts we're happy with um having had like then work on like proof of concept something to write that scene moments even like a pilot you know that we can say oh this is the vibe of it all and even talking to Jojo and, and Charlie well especially Jojo she's from Argentina she's actually international like student from Argentina when I told her about this she's like cat so much money people would give in Argentina for this to to be made like you have no idea and I'm just like so I know honestly I'm not worried about the money I do believe it's gonna come because once I present the pitch this story I just I I can already feel it people are gonna give to make this happen so I'm not worried about that thankfully (laughs) I'm really not but um yeah so I know that one this is gonna be a long project (laughs) but it's I don't want to rush it because I do feel like it's my Hamilton kind of (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or it took him years, you know, to make it. I'm like, yeah, yeah I don't want to rush him. He said that too. Like he did his research. He did all these things before even starting to, you know, write the music for it. And it's like, yeah, that's what I'm feeling right now for it for sure too. <laughs> awesome. Oh my God. I'm definitely <laughs> going to want to keep tabs on that because it sounds yeah. like, oh man, mm-hmm. so, so many of the projects you have percolating just sound yeah. incredible. And yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't wait to see what comes from yeah. Yeah. all of the work you put into this yeah the, the, these are definitely I know these are long ones like I know these are going to take years to develop for sure but that's why honestly I'm I'm here for it I'm like there's no rush <laughs> I, as long as it's I would like it to be done like now like short films you do them to go, 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 done and that's like with these these are big ones so they're going to take the time that they need and that's perfectly fine with me <laughs> as long as they're made <laughs> and they come so- to yeah I did want to ask kind of, we've touched on a couple of projects that are in the works for you. Um, what sort of waves overall in your career do you want to, do you want to make in the industry? Oh yeah. So good. Um, yeah, honestly, for me, at least my own mission and my why of why I do whatever I do right now, whether it is acting and filmmaking, just being the storyteller of, in in not just say doing whatever like I I don't I don't want to create anything or 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 be involved honestly as an actor in a project that is just to entertain um I really want it to mean and do something for people actually either propel them to do something or like encourage them or like feed them in some way shape or form um and even heal for me like healing is a huge thing of like why I want to do whether it's healing something painful in history healing something in like someone's life of like look you're not alone like you can get through this you know like some kind of encouragement some kind of uplifting so it's not just them sitting and watching something just to just pass the time but I do want them to leave with something essential like oh wow that actually like did something for me too in my own personal life I yeah I don't know if I answered the question <laughs> yeah okay cool yes yes you did <laughs> I <forgot> a little <laughs> bit <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's literally the, the biggest thing for me is like, that's why I do what I do and why I want to continue to do what I do. That's why I don't think that for me with this kind of career, like there's so much like the no's and stuff like that. For me, it's just like, cool, moving on to the next thing. Cause like, it wasn't mm-hmm. for me. This wasn't it. Like to me now, it's like, I, I'm, that's not why I'm doing it. It's not for right. these little things. It's for the overall picture for, for people, for more, you know, um, yeah, for others. Um, I would like to too, at some point in my life, like, um get to the point where I can you know like uh what is it um I'm such a huge like thing I have a huge thing for kids so like going back to schools and like help you know enrich more artistic programs and like because I hate that that's the first thing like schools cut is like money and funds to the arts and like cool sports are fun (laughs) don't get me wrong and they're good (laughs) but like dang like whenever this pandemic happened, everyone was watching things. Everyone was listening to music. Everyone was literally like needing the artist to help heal your soul and fill you with what you need in this moment. So like, 
just putting my putting whatever I can to those areas and kids and inspiring them and opening up schools you know that help with that too if like let's say their school can't like having programs available so like there's a lot of future you know like dreams I have in that regard but yeah just like having that as my biggest thing is like I'm I don't think I'm gonna stop anytime soon yeah I mean having having a why and having a strong vision yeah for what you want to do with your work um yeah. that that's you know we talked a little bit before yeah. recording that's yeah. so important to have that mindset because it it gets you through all of the rejection yeah. and all of the fear exactly. and um you need that kind of mindset in order to yeah. to withstand kind of the yeah. the the peaks and the valleys of it all sometimes there's a lot of silence and that'll get you through it yep yep and and it's like it's so much out of our control too like at yeah. the end of the day it's like we are we are here we're available <laughs> but like it's <laughs> like all right <laughs> i guess moving on to the next thing like there's so much out of your control is insane sometimes too um obviously yeah. being prepared and you know having whatever work you need to do obviously but then after that letting it go and like if it's meant for you it's for you you know yeah believer of that yeah and every no is one step closer to a yes yeah exactly that's so good yeah yep. yep. and even like the, yeah even the almost like even like yeah. one of my friends oh lauren i don't know if you know lauren i'm maybe finishing the letter name but <laughs> i don't know if she wants to be <laughs> mentioned but i know one of her biggest struggles and i hated that a lot was in the beginning for her was like and even now i think she has that struggle too with when it came to like acting and like casting and like her always being second or like oh you were almost you know like picked and it's like she's like well when am i you know like why and then like i told like girl that's also a win and like obviously that's not yeah. what she wanted to hear in that moment right because in that moment you do want to be picked or you want to be the pick not the almost picked but yeah. i'm like if you celebrate at least that you know it'll help you appreciate more and more when you do get it because that's yeah. huge you know the fact that a they even took the time to email you to tell you by the way we did love you however you know you you were you were you you're in our brain though like you're, you're in consideration for other things or whatever i'm like yeah. no normally they don't want you they don't even email you nothing we hear nothing back literally yeah. it's like you didn't get it i guess now okay cool <laughs> yep but yeah just keeping that that ball rolling though like if this is truly what you enjoy and you really you can't see yourself doing anything else it's like staying the course yeah <laughs> see what leads. now we're we're almost out of time so i did mm -hmm. want to ask what are any parting thoughts or any words of wisdom you'd like to leave us with? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, yeah, I would just say like, I mean, I guess specifically to other artists, you know, and other filmmakers, even female filmmakers specifically, maybe, um, or not, you know, I would like to open it to more mm -hmm. people. Um, but just anytime that, that whatever you can see in your life that you feel like, whoa, like, I don't think this has been told yet or there needs to be a shine a light on certain things I feel like that's going to be like the biggest propeller to like make something happen that has substance and has meaning and can actually propel more change because I feel like the more we see projects like that the more it encourages us to add more fire to that more fuel to that fire you yeah know? so um yeah and I I honestly yeah I always encourage the like even if you feel like you don't have the energy because we're right now sometimes I don't I'm going through so much right now emotionally <laughs> like through this breakup and like <laughs> like a bunch of things too <laughs> I go through too and like such a short amount of time it doesn't matter bottom line is whatever you're going through emotionally there's just so many things to do that if you feel like this is what you wake up to every day or wake up every day to feel like I want to this is what I want to do in my life like just do something a little something every day to get you closer to where you want to go where you want to be not having yeah. to give yourself pressure I as I, I work so much sometimes that like I don't give myself time to rest and that was one of the biggest burnouts I had I think two years ago it was horrible it took me forever to like get back up again and get the energy and the fuel to like start back up again and do things because yeah. my body was just like shut down like girl we're done <laughs> we're not doing anything right now <laughs> I was just in bed like wow I literally burnt out and I hadn't done, I didn't work on a lot of things a lot, but I always kind of did give myself like mini breaks in between when I feel it coming. But this time it was just so much that happened all at once that I could not. Literally longest burnout I've ever had in my life. And like, yeah, just give yourself rest. 
give yourself time to heal whatever you need to heal if you're going through something in your life things can take a pause <laughs> take care of you love yourself and that way you're able to have the energy and the time you know to to devote to what you're actually trying to do so. yeah awesome thank you so much <laughs> Kat for joining us thank you for inviting me thank you so much I feel so honored <laughs> thank you so much now, for all listeners out there, if you like what you hear and would like to support the show, follow us on Instagram for updates and check out our brand new merch. You can grab a t-shirt or a hat or a mug, or if you would just like to support the podcast um, just as a whole, check us out on Coffee. That's ko-fi.com backslash will act for change. I hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.